Good evening, everybody. Welcome to First Church, First Church of Religious Science, broadcasting here in New York City. Uh, I want to give a special welcome to all of you on Zoom. I know many of you are still signing in. This has become a really big gathering. It's, uh, it's surprising and not surprising because we know the material is good. and We've been doing it a long time, and uh, we're thrilled to see so many of you hundreds now watching every week, and it's really exciting for us. Uh, so welcome to our special gathering. No matter if you're joining us again on Zoom or you're tuning in on Facebook or YouTube or any of the other social uh, media channels, uh, we're joyed and overjoyed to have you with us. This is a wonderful community. Uh, it's not just about the teaching, it's about you. It's about what you all uh, share and how you share and participate. Uh, this gathering, this uh, group of wonderful people is growing by leaps and bounds. Uh, I want you to know first and foremost that your your presence, each and every one of you individually, uh, it makes a difference, and we're really grateful uh, that you share your op you share your time with us. Our gathering is special; it's made more so uh, by each of you. Um, Jimmy and I, we get all of the messages. There's just so many, and uh, we appreciate the thanks and the words of cheer. We're here to always get into the profound teachings of Louise Hay, who we all love here in particular. Uh, she was, was a remarkable person and an author of the transformational book, You Can Heal Your Life. She was a cherished practitioner here at First Church and a staff minister. Her legacy in self-healing uh, is huge in the world. Um, she became bigger, I think, than religious science itself. Um, and so we take her lessons. There's a lesson for every week of the year. And we do our best to amplify her message, and we bring in some Ernest Holmes as well. And then we look forward to uh, those of you who share afterwards. If you're new, I want to say welcome. I'm glad you found us. Um, you always find this type of uh, class or gathering, by the way, at the right time. So your energy, collectively, your participation, and your presence makes a big difference. Uh, as we cultivate this space for healing with uh, hundreds of people, uh, and as we're growing, if some of you have mentioned that you want to support the work we do here, and you can, uh, there's always an option in the chat uh, to make donations. Uh, you can look at the chat, you'll see various uh, ways to do it, or you can also go to our website. Uh, the main thing to know about this group is there's never any obligation to uh, make any donations. Uh, it's your participation and your presence that are the most important things to us. Um, so we're happy to have you here. Uh, just your presence, bring your love and your good wishes. Uh, for those of you who are interested, uh, we do have a wonderful uh, e-letter invitation every week, uh, pastor's message, uh, filled with spiritual gems and uplifting content. Um, if you'd like to receive it, uh, simply send us a direct message in the chat and uh, include your contact information, your email, and uh, your phone number would be good also. That way we can... Uh, give you, send you the e-letter, as well as keep you abreast of our classes. And twice this week, I've been asked for our physical address. It's on our website, but I'll give it to you now. Some of you uh, send in checks, and you can mail to the church at 204 West 84th Street, New York, New York, 10024. So that would be to First Church at 204 West 84th Street, New York, New York. Uh, so that's, those are my announcements. Please contribute if you feel uh, moved to, uh, never feel obliged to. Our main goal is to have you here growing and evolving, engaging with our community. Uh, this center uh, knows that it uh, thrives and it's supplied and supported and we appreciate anything and everything anyone does. Uh, so let me look at the board. So we've got well over 100. Jimmy usually tells me midway it's 160, 170, 175 people. And he promises me that it's going to be over 200 very soon. So that's wonderful. 
And again, we're getting all your comments and compliments. And your demonstrations are the things that are really the most exciting because we're hearing that the teaching is working in your life. So we hope you find inspiration. We know you'll find comfort and support uh, in our gathering uh, every night and tonight, hopefully, um, without exception. So let's make this time meaningful and enriching. Um, those of you who have signed on again for about the fifth time, welcome to this space of healing. Welcome to the wonderful evening ahead. I want to start out with a little poem that I've put together, uh, various Louise Hay, Ernest Holmes types of ideas, and one that ties in directly into tonight's message. It's entitled The Journey Within. And here it goes. Dear cherished souls, gather near, lend your hearts, and lend your ears. As we embark on a sacred dance, a journey within, a transformative trance, breathe in deep, let go of strife, welcome the whispers of life. In the vast expanse of our inner sky, thoughts like clouds freely fly, creating worlds, weaving fate, in their power we participate. Every thought a potent seed, in its essence a mighty deed. So let's choose with conscious care the thoughts we nurture, the thoughts we share. In the now our power lies, a present gift, a grand surprise. With every breath, breath we draw life near, the point of power, crystal clear. Embrace this moment, hold it dear, for in the now we conquer fear. Yet shadows linger, doubts and guilt are on foundations of self-hatred built. I'm not enough, the heart cries out in moments of silence, moments of doubt. But hear me now and hear me clear, that's just a thought and thoughts can steer. Transform the sh shadows, change the tale, set the sails and lift the veil. For we create with thoughts profound the illnesses that seem to hound. Resentment, criticism, heavy guilt, patterns damaging, webs we built. Release resentment, let it go, and watch your inner gardens grow. Even ailments stern and severe dissolve when love and forgiveness appear. Forgive the past, embrace the light, and watch as your spirits take flight. Love yourself, O radiant beam, and, and unlock the power of your inner dream. Self-approval, acceptance sweet, open doors and make life neat. For when we truly love our essence, life aligns and sings of presence. So, dear ones, let's start it anew, embrace ourselves, and be true. For in self-love we find our way and turn our nights into bright day. In this space of love and care, we find strength beyond compare. Let's all breathe it in, this love so deep. It's yours to hold, yours to keep. For you are worthy, oh so dear. In this space there is no fear. Welcome love, welcome light. In this journey, find your might. So, and so it is. So you can breathe that in. That was a joy to put together. Breathe that in. Now I have a story for you about healing. It's based upon a real person. I've changed the names. <laughs> it's a testament to what can happen when we focus on the good the power within, on the unwavering belief that we are fully supplied and supported in every step of our life. The woman whose name I've changed to Emma, because um, this is based on a true story. There's a woman, Emma, who like many of us found herself entangled in the web of past regrets and self-doubt. Emma was a vibrant lady, but for years was carrying a sense of guilt uh, from a strained relationship that she had with her sister. Uh, Emma oftentimes felt disconnected from life, and she was hurting for a long time. She had a misunderstanding uh, that it escalated into years of silence and bitterness, uh, and created a big void in her life, uh, un unspoken words and unresolved emotions. 
Deep in her heart, she yearned to connect with her sister, but it wasn't happening, and the weight of the past was holding them both back. One day, as she was about to give in to despair, she was feeling depressed, um, she stumbled upon one of our gatherings um, on Facebook, uh, and much like the ones that we're a part of right now, and she heard stories of healing, and she heard people's testimonials of transformation, and something within her sparked with just a bit of hope, a whisper that you know maybe something could happen. Uh, so she started listening, and she began a journey of self-love and forgiveness. She said she was listening quietly for many, many weeks to the messages uh, that I've given and people's comments. She decided to practice her affirmations, and she learned how to do affirmative prayer all by herself. And she engaged in releasing the negatives and filling her thoughts with love and acceptance. Love and acceptance. She said, I love myself the way I am. And she started to believe that she was supported by life itself, the universe. And so then she reported that she started using one of my affirmations, which is, uh, God is all that there is, and life is good. Uh, she reported back to us that she kept on saying that she has a divine connection with her sister that goes beyond all of her misunderstandings. And that was her next affirmation, that she's connected with her sister, and that connection is stronger than any misunderstanding. Her days turned into weeks, and into a few months, and she kept tuning into the classes, and a remarkable shift began to occur. She started to experience a deep sense of inner peace, realizing at last that her worth wasn't dependent on the past, or anyone's opinion, or even her sister's. Embracing this new sense, of this new connection, this new power of the present moment, somehow she had a tiny mad idea to reach out to her sister, another time again. And to her absolute astonishment, this time everything was different. Her sister was receptive. There was a reconciliation after all those years. <clears throat> they cried, they laughed, uh, and most importantly, they forgave one another. The years of distance melted away. So love and understanding took its place. Emma's health, by the way, started to improve dramatically. She said that she had been healed not just emotionally, but physically, she was starting to improve in all areas. The resentments, the guilt that once poisoned her system <clears throat> dissolved, making way for new vitality and joy. So today, everybody, as we sit here, I want you to know that Emma, she has another name, Emma and her sister have healed their relationship. Her journey is a powerful reminder that when we focus on the truth, when we focus on the love, on the good, and on our divine connection with Source, miracles occur. Miracles are natural. When you're not experiencing them in your life, um, something's gone wrong, as the Course of Miracles would say. The kingdom of God, as we say, is at hand. It's always here. We're not, when we're not experiencing it, then we, we need to do something and think about things in a different way. All of us are supplied, we're supported, we're loved, and we're capable of healing beyond our wildest dreams. So now I'd like to invite you just to close your eyes for a moment and take a deep, centering breath. Imagine yourself in a tranquil garden, a space of peace and acceptance. I'd like you to visualize a loving light above you, descending gently, washing away any residue of guilt or resentment, Feel this warmth, the warmth of its embrace, its healing touch, dissolving burdens, creating space for love and acceptance. See yourself holding a stone, representing any unresolved emotions. Acknowledge it. Feel its weight. And when you're ready, gently place it down, leaving it behind. Choosing to step forward in lightness and love, Feel the garden around you responding, blossoming, vibrantly blossoming, mirroring your inner transformation. Breathe in love. Breathe out release. Whisper to yourself, I am worthy of love and healing. 
Again, I am worthy of love and healing. And when you're ready, gently open your eyes, bring yourself back to this moment, carrying the lightness and the love with you. So back to the main part of the lesson. It's, it's important to acknowledge that most of the world doesn't think the way that we think. Most of the world uh, doesn't think the way that Louise Hay thinks. Uh, most of the world didn't think the way that Ralph Waldo Emerson thought either. Um, he was, of course, a great influence on uh, Ernest Holmes, who was a great influence on Louise Hay. They used to say of Emerson, a few from every age will discover you know, what he knew, the consciousness that he had. Uh, Louise Hay is a leader because she thought the way she thought. She's called a new thought leader. Um, she's touched hundreds of millions of people, I'm sure. Uh, but she didn't think like most of the, of the masses. Sometimes we talk about the masses, right? So when you enter into a class like this, a gathering like this, it's important to acknowledge that you've already come a long way, <laughs> even to be thinking this type of way. Uh, most, again, of the world doesn't, uh, doesn't do this. It doesn't see the world as one. It doesn't look at life as one unitary uh, thing. Deepak, Ch Deepak Chopra would say the unitary field of existence. Uh, when we get into our teaching, we understand that we're one with this one life. Uh, we're individualizations of it. Uh, whatever it is, we are. And we begin to understand that uh, this very thing that's in us is in every single living person. So, as, you, as I have said about four times, uh, you've already been given a great gift, which is the realization that you are an individualization of God life and that life is responding to you all the time. Uh, this is the thing that Emerson was talking about in his l essays. Uh, the world, by the way, uh, is fine, it's evolving, and so are you. All of life is evolving and unfolding in divine right order. Uh, Dr. Bill used to say, we're evoluting along. All of us are growing and understanding. And I'd like to just have everybody acknowledge the fact that you've already grown a great deal. <laughs> you might not think of yourself but you, in that way, but you've grown so much. You know so much more now than you did even a few years ago. And you will continue to grow. And all of life is growing. Uh, you might think, well, it isn't growing fast enough because there's still all kinds of problems uh, in your life and in the world. And, and I can understand how you might think that way. Uh, but let's focus on the good that's here, that's in us individually and collectively. We share tremendous uh, good. Uh, we have power to use, as Ernest Holmes said. So the world is evolving with love and understanding, and so are we. Let's first acknowledge the common state, though, of unawareness that prevails. Otherwise, we'd be in denial about it. <laughs> um, if you found your way here, it's because you're conscious to this class. It's because your consciousness is ready. If you found your way here to this gathering, it would suggest you're ready to take a small or a big leap forward. You're ready to begin working with the ideas that we present. You're, able, you're beginning to work with self-healing. And you're beginning to work with that healing uh, conversation. Every Thursday I ask at some point, what has it been like being you? Because I'm inviting you to become more conscious of your thinking, your thoughts, the very things that are creating your experience. The lessons that we have here, which I've created from the, the Louise Hay material, can help you in your journey tremendously. Um, a lot of people feel like they've been tossed around in life, uh, in their relationships, in, you know, in their jobs, and just, you know, they feel like they've just been kicked around, maybe by the winds of fate, or people feel powerless, and some people feel victimized. Yet, Louise Hay's transformative message has always been very clear when she said we were each responsible for our own experiences. And she next said, every thought we think is sculpting our future. So it's important to understand that she never suggested that we're to blame for anything. 
But she said, we are responsible for our own experiences. In the science of mind teaching a new thought, we would say that life reflects your understanding. So every thought we think is creating, is sculpting our future. With that in mind, let's affirm with passion. I am the master of my thoughts. <laughs> I create my own reality. And you can say that to yourself or write it down. I am the master of my own thoughts. I create my own reality. And as you do that, feel the empowering shift that you, as you re reclaim your own creative power, because you have the power. There's another one that's very similar that I say often. I am the author of my own experience. <clears throat> that was one of Dr. Bill's favorites. I am the author of my own experience, and he taught, taught it to all of his students. So he didn't let us be pointing fingers and doing the blame game very much in classes because he said it's always a mistake. <laughs> I'm the author of my own experiences. Many people have a tendency to explain their life experiences away, blaming other people. It's just you hear it all the time. And for those of us who are in New Thought, we know it's always a mistake <laughs> to be pointing fingers and blaming other people. As we grow to love ourselves more, one step at a time. As we do this, we release the need to explain what has happened to us in terms of other people. Um, we have more powerful language. We have more empowering language. Um, we would uh, learn how to say, um, I allowed such and such to happen. Um, uh, we don't talk in terms of what people have done to us. We'll say, you know, in the past I might have done this, in the past I might have done that, or I have allowed this, or I have allowed that. If you can start to language your life experiences that way, you're coming from a much stronger position. Another powerful idea of release, which um, I've been using for years, is this. I'm not a victim of the world I see. Uh, it's a very similar idea. <laughs> Instead of talking about what people have done to us, we, we, in your mind you could say, I'm not a victim of this. Uh, I'm not a victim of the world I see. Uh, here's a good release. I release the need to think this way. <laughs> uh, I release the need to speak this way also. Again, I am caused to my own experience, and I can change. So wherever my languaging or your languaging is about blame and... Uh, just speaking about your reality in terms of what other people have done, understand that understand that, that, some, that can keep you locked into a pattern that will get you nowhere. So it's more empowering to acknowledge what happened. I'm responsible for my life, and I allowed this or that to happen. And remember again, I'm not a victim of anything. <laughs> of the world I see, I release the need to think that way. I release the need to speak that way. And for about the third time, I'm, I'm caused to my own experience, and I can definitely change. I can change. I can be in a new moment. My favorite idea. I can always be in a new moment and change the idea. I can change any idea and any belief. Uh, Raymond Charles Barker famously said, yesterday ended last night. So you're free in any moment you become aware just to drop it, whatever it is, and release it and tell yourself something better. And most people in the world, though, the vast majority, uh, don't do it that way. <laughs> They're very much entangled in the past. Uh, and it's really, really difficult for people to be in a new moment. And that's the reason people have a lot of problems in relationships, because they want to get up and have a new day, but they're carrying unresolved issues from yesterday. And we do it all over the place. So Ernest Holmes would say there's power for good in the universe. and You can use it. I mean, you can create, starting here, starting, starting now, right here tonight, you can, you can make a decision, the power of a decision to do it all differently. But again, people are entangled in their past generally. You don't have to be, but that's the reality for many people. And it's very difficult for people to be in a new moment because, again, they carry around a lot of stuff. You know the stuff they carry. We call it baggage. They carry stories, old tapes, grievances, grudges, resentments. Uh, you hear me talk about this all the time. So that's what most people do. But 
that's not what religious scientists do. That's not what truth students do. Um, those of us who are in the teaching are really getting committed to releasing the need for all of that. It's very, very difficult for, to, for people to be in a new moment when they're carrying around any of this or any of these negative states of consciousness. So we have work set up. We have work to do. Uh, Louise Hay, as you know, said, it's like cleaning a house. You begin wherever you are. <laughs> Whatever negative story you might be having, you drop it. Just drop it. Just think something good. Think something positive. So the world is where it is. We've got the majority of people doing this. Uh, and we have a large group of people who are equally an anxious about the future. So you've got people carrying the past with them and not letting it go, and then you have people worrying about the future. So what do you think your life looks like if you're all in the past and you're all in the future? It's a big mess, right? So um, you're, when you come into a teaching like this, we tell you, okay, we want to release the past and we want to forgive everybody. And we want to attempt to start living in the now and be in a new moment. Again, my favorite idea, because wherever you can truly be in a new moment, you're free. You're free of the past, you're free of the future. But a lot of people, I spoke of the past, a lot of people are just as worried about the future. They're worried about their financial security, concerns about their jobs, where the next paycheck's coming from, how they're gonna pay their rent. They're worried about their retirement or simply making ends meet these days. Uh, Many people are worried about illnesses, real or future illnesses even. They're worried about the aging process or the health of their loved ones. People worry about relationships. They worry about their relationships ending. They worry about being alone or they have worries about their families and their friends. And then there's a lot of people who are worried about the situations that are going on all over the world. They're stressing about the world, they're stressing about climate change, they're stressing about political instability, you name it, they're worrying. And then there's a whole lot of worrying that's going on about the unknown, <laughs> the uncertainty about where life is heading or what the future holds. Um, people are worried about their personal safety and the safety of, of the things that they care about. The thing we understand in religious science about all of this is when you're caught up in worry and you're in the future, or if you're tied up in you know, what people have done to you in the past and you're carrying all those stories, you're overlooking the immense power that you have right here in this moment, the power of the now, of the present moment. Louise Hay teaches us that this moment holds the key to transformation. This moment, we call it the holy moment, the holy instant. So knowing that our power is always in the present, let's together affirm, in this moment, I am powerful. Again, in this moment, I am powerful. I am capable of positive change. And we can say the whole thing. In this moment, I am powerful. I'm capable of positive change. You release the past. And I say this often, I release the past and I forgive everyone. You can choose one that works for you. And if I get caught up in thinking in the future, I'm going to release the need to be there also. So we want to embrace in this moment the unparalleled strength that's accessible to each and every one of us right now. Each of us are inlets and outlets of this energy, this spectacular energy. You have everything you need. So keep going back to the present moment and know that you are supplied and supported. You might say that again. I am supplied and supported. Uh, life loves me. I have everything I need. I am supplied and supported. Now I want to move on to another pattern. It's a human condition for people to grapple with feelings of self-doubt, self-worry, self-hatred, and guilt. That's not necessarily the way we do it here in our group, in our gathering, because many of you have been working on these ideas for a long time. But it's a human condition for people to grapple with all that. It's part of the success of Louise Hay's book, 
because she said the bottom line for everyone she's ever worked with after you hear all the reasons they first talk about is that they don't feel okay they don't feel good enough um, so again it's a human condition to grapple with feelings of self-hatred and guilt to believe the lie that you're not good enough i want to say that again if you're not feeling good enough it's a human condition to be grappling with these feelings to believe the lie that i'm not good enough I'm here to tell you that not only are you good enough, you're one in a billion. You're, you know, there's never been another one like you and there never will be. Louise reminds us that these are mere thoughts that we have, these negative thoughts, and they absolutely can be transformed. If you have the conviction and you really uh, want to change, you want to begin to love yourself, you start affirming, I am enough just the way I am. I love myself the way I am. I release guilt. I embrace love. And let yourself feel the profound shift as you let go of the chains, uh, the animosity, the self-hatred, and openly welcome love into your being. One more time, let's say to ourselves, I love myself the way I am. Now let's, let's think about our healing our bodies. Let's focus there just for a moment or two. Many individuals carry ailments in their bodies unaware that they have participated in their own creation. Uh, they've created these conditions through patterns of resentment, criticism, and guilt. Louise enlightens us, showing us that releasing these damaging patterns can open the door to healing. I have some affirmations for us. Together, let's declare, I release resentment. I choose healing. Another, my body responds with strength and vitality. My body responds with strength and vitality. As you say these affirmations, you can welcome the wave of healing energy that flows as you release old harmful patterns. Next, let, next let me mention the, imper, the importance of forgiveness and self-love. Most of the world are burdened with weights of the past, as I've spoken before, unaware that forgiveness is the key that unlocks the door to freedom. I mentioned that in the story this evening. Louise encourages us to let go. She encourages us to release the past and make it your business to forgive everyone, and most of all, forgive ourselves, so we can go forward on a sacred journey of self-love. With open hearts, this evening, let's affirm, I forgive the past, I embrace love for myself and others. So that's really beautiful. <clears throat> affirm to yourself, here's a suggestion anyway, I forgive the past and I embrace love for myself and others. As you say these affirmations, and you bring them into your heart, you can feel the liberation and the lightness that accompanies the act of forgiveness. Louise teaches us in a society that often breeds uh, self-doubt and comparison. Uh, she teaches us a different way, a different approach. Self-approval and self-acceptance in the now, she said, are the keys, the golden keys to positive change. Together with love and acceptance, let us affirm tonight, I approve of myself, I accept myself, I love myself. Again, I approve of myself, I accept myself, and I love myself. And as you say this, you can feel the blossoming of your being as you wholeheartedly embrace yourself. And you can watch your life begin to transform in the most beautiful ways. These truths that I mentioned this evening are profound and they're all transformative. As we learn to embrace them and step into a space of healing, self-love, and um, as we do, we're going to have transformation. So let these affirmations guide you let them be the light on your path to wholeness and fulfillment. Let's take a moment now to reflect and bask in the insights of the teachings that Louise Hay has passed on and that we've explored today. We've spoken, spoken tonight of the importance of personal responsibility, embracing the present moment, which is always our, our point of power. We've spoken of the importance of releasing the shackles of self-hatred and guilt. Together we've acknowledged the reality 
uh, that wherever we say I'm not good enough, that's just a thought. And that's a thought that we have the power to change. We've gone into the understanding that our bodies respond to our thoughts and feelings and that by letting go of resentment, criticism, guilt, and all of that, we're going to open doors to healing and great vitality. We've recognized the imperative need to release the past, to forgive, and to step boldly into a space of self-acceptance and self-approval. And as we do this, we're discovering when we really love ourselves and accept ourselves that everything in our life begins to flow with joy, grace, and ease. I'd like you all to remember you're supplied and supported. You're loved. You're supplied and supported and you're loved just the way you are. And carry these healing thoughts with you this evening. Let them resonate in your heart. If you do, you'll watch your life transform before your eyes. It's important, I will add, to stay tuned in to what we do. <laughs> Many people find us and then they lose us for a while. and They come back months later, a year or two later. Please, my only suggestion is just stay with us. Stay in the conversation. Of, the conversation is about loving yourself and walking into a bigger world of love and light. So as we transition from this space of learning this evening and re reflection, I'd like to invite each of you to share uh, after the break. It's, it's going to be your time, your moment to express your demonstrations, what it's been like being you. It's wonderful uh, if you're new and you just say hello in your name or where you're from. So let's open the floor. Let's share our stories of transformation, healing, our challenges. Uh, let's continue to uplift one another and support one another on this beautiful journey of life. Um, Thank you all for being here. Uh, thank you for your openness. Thank you for your generous support and being part of this wonderful community. The floor is now yours. I look forward to hearing from everyone. Thank you. <laughs> 